Okay, I guess we can start. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, today we have a talk by Yuri Makienka, and he will speak about uh, uh, distinguishing number got and Polyakov strings from Pauli Villar's regularization. So please start. Okay, it might be a pleasure to give this talk. And I have listed in my first slide uh, some papers I published on this subject well over, I mean, some recent years. And uh, yeah, okay, so I have shown this you in order to, well, in order to be understandable why I would be rather sketchy at some slide. Okay, so this is uh, the contents of my talk. And actually all would be about the two problems in non perturbative bosonic string theory, which I will mention. And these problems are mostly the problem of, I mean, the very existence of non perturbative bosonic string in four dimensions, okay, in physical number of dimensions. And well, it was a lot of approaches to these problems. And uh, while well, I can just report to you that most probably uh, the resolution of these two problems would be that uh, the number Gotha string and the Polyakov string, which was I mean, usually used in the derivation of these two no-go theorems, okay, which I will just mention, um, okay, just would be different. But before, I mean, describing these two problems, okay, just, I mean, inherited from 1980s. Okay, and the first series of no-go theorems, actually there were two no-go theorems, why by this gentleman for the, I mean, hypercubic lattice, it was really an Ambugota string, okay? And these two gentlemen were using dynamical, it was called, I mean, dynamical triangulations, namely a kind of discretization of the Polyakov string. Okay, so the result was, it does not exist in physical number of dimensions, okay? And actually, it, I mean, it does not exist in the string phase. It does exist like a particle. And the second, I mean, series of work, it was, well, to me, a little bit more, I mean, intelligent using some, I mean, sophisticated technique of conformal field theory. And, and actually the final results first pointed out by Knizhnik, Polyakov, and Zamolochikov in late, I mean, in, I mean, in late 1980s was that uh, the strings, I mean, the strings susceptibility index, I will define it a little bit later. It is described by some formula, okay, which makes sense only for D at the target space dimension less than one. In physical number of, I mean, target space dimensions, okay, name the three or four, uh, this number would become complex, okay? And because of that, it was, if you wish, one more, uh, okay, one more, I mean, I mean, no-go theorem for, I mean, string existence. Okay, now just a few words about, I would say, I mean, the kinematics of my approach, okay? And my kinematics is that, uh, I mean, I consider it's called now the effective string theory Okay, so I consider string, I mean, not as being fundamental like in gravity, but rather constructed from some, I mean, constituents like say, because of vertices, Nielsen vortex string or confining string in QCD. And I would need this kind of, I mean, philosophy in order to avoid some important string problems like, I mean, I mean, tachyonic problems and stuff like that. Okay. And now I start from some technical, I mean, point. Okay, let me just open 
and one another. Okay, my mobile, the, I mean, this once again, you know, just to check what's going on because I can see, I mean, anything on my screen. Okay, so let me just, I mean, start from describing, I mean, from describing what was number got a string. Yeah, okay, just one second because I can't see I mean, anything. Uh, well, I, I can't see, I mean, if anything is going on. Yeah, everything is fine. We, we can see it. Everything was fine. Okay. Yes. Okay, then I'm sorry because I can't just see I mean, anything. So I was just slightly worried. Okay, now we continue. Okay, just sorry. Uh, okay, so this is my construction. It's from, I start from the very beginning. It is uh, the formulation of the not, I mean, of the number gotta string via the Lagrange multiplier. And the number gotta string is defined uh, by the, I mean, the action is just defined, I mean, as, uh, I mean, as, I mean, the area of the string wall sheet, okay? It is just, I mean, it is just written here. And this formula is extremely nonlinear in target space, in target space coordinates X. And because of that, it's custom to introduce a Lagrange multiplier lambda in order to okay in order to i mean have an independent an independent matrix which i call rho like in the case of the polyakov string okay so this looks pretty much like the formulation uh, by polyakov okay except i have this additional uh, lagrange multiplier lambda and it would be possible to path integrate over x in this formulation and uh, it would be actually the goal to introduce uh, this I mean Lagrange multiplier for the number got a string. Okay, so I will work with uh, the wall sheet parameterization. Okay, just taking my parameters, I mean omega. Okay, inside I mean some rectangle and the classical, I mean solution would be just I mean standard one. Okay, just like usual. So I will split my uh, my target space coordinate into the classical part. Okay, into classical and quantum part. Okay, and then I would just path integrate, I mean, over this quantum part. Okay, and when I integrate over the quantum, I mean, over the quantum part, and as I mentioned, it tensors, I mean, just quadratically. So path integral, in fact, is, I mean, easily doable. And it would be just, I mean, the determinant of, I mean, some operator. Okay, plus, I mean, if I fix the conformal, I mean, if I fix, I mean, the conformal gauge, okay, then it would be additionally the determinant of this Okay, of this, I mean, I mean, of this operator associated with Gauss. Okay, so my, okay, so my action for, I mean, for rho and lambda would be, it's called, I mean, usually the induced, I mean, no imagine action. It would have the standard classical part, which is just, I mean, in my first line. Okay, and plus additionally, Okay, this determinant and the Gauss determinant. Okay, so first of all, I would have to somehow, I mean, compute this, I mean, I mean, this X, I mean, this determinant coming from axis and coming, I mean, I mean, from Gauss. And in order to do that, I need some regularizations. It is because my determinants as usual are divergent. 
And the standard regularization for computing, I mean, the determinants in particular, which are Cardi used, I mean, in early 1980s, I mean, is the Pauli, excuse me, I mean, is, I mean, the, I mean, the proper time regularization introduced by Schwinger. Okay, and for this regulation, and for this regularization, we simply cut this integral over the proper parameter at some value. Okay, and this would regularize, I mean, our infrared divergence, I mean, because our integral is, sorry, I mean, because our integral, I mean, is divergent at small tau. And instead of that, I mean, we found, uh, we see a number most convenient just to use another regularization when instead of cutting at small values, I mean, of the proper time, we introduce, I mean, such a factor, okay, one minus, I mean, exponential of tau minus some regulator, a mass squared. Okay. Okay, and introducing such a factor would be enough to cut off uh, the region of small, I mean, I mean, tau as well, except I need square, I mean, here, I mean, because my, I mean, because my, I mean, my, I mean, my, I mean, my, I mean, trace, I mean, this matrix element, I mean, of my operator, according to the Sealy expansion, it goes like one of tau, okay, so actually my, Okay, so actually my integrand, it goes like one of tau squared. Okay, so because of that, I need tau squared. Okay, just coming from the regulator. And this is exactly what is provided, I mean, by the square. Okay, now if I restore back this, I mean, I mean, this procedure for the determinants, it would be the ratio I mean, actually, I mean, of, I mean, I mean, four determinants. Okay, so it would be my original determinants. It would be this determinant, I mean, of the Pauli Villar regulator squared. Okay, so this Pauli Villar fields, okay, must, okay, must come with, I mean, opposite statistics like Grassmann variables. It is why this determinant is in the denominator. Okay, and it would be according according to this definition, one would determinant, I mean in the okay, in the numerator. Okay, so this procedure would cut off, I mean, actually all the divergences in my construction. I mean no infrared divergences in my construction. And this procedure additionally would have, I mean, several very, I would say, I mean, I mean, remarkable advantages. And in particular, uh, we can just compute this ratio of determinants, okay, okay, just by beautiful diagrammatic technique like in quantum field theory, uh, representing determinants, okay, back as path integrals. It's first of all, and second of all, it's possible, I mean, even to somehow, I mean, exactly compute these determinants for some metrics using, okay, using uh, the gelfand yag okay, I mean, using the gelfand yaglum technique and to compare with some I mean, of the results, uh, okay, which would be obtained by this diagrammatic technique, which is, okay, which is also known as, I mean, silly expansion. Yeah, okay, so, and because I mentioned the CL expansion, it would be crucial for me, and it's always crucial for computing these determinants. Okay, that I mean this heat kernel, or in my case, a little bit more complicated operator. We can expand, I mean, in the powers of, I mean, in the powers of tau, and I mean the second term would be the conformal. It would be the usual conformal anomaly. Okay, and blah blah blah, and the standard wisdom is that the height, uh, I mean the high terms, which I mean now of the order of um, tower, high powers of tower. 
Okay, would be suppressed for smooth, I mean, configurations. I mean, for smooth metrics like, I mean, the curvature, I mean, over this lambda squared. Okay, so this is, I mean, I mean, the current, I mean, wisdom, but my goal would be, it would be precisely, I mean, finally to evaluate this, I mean, the contribution of this, uh, okay, of this additional, I mean, I mean, terms, which, okay, which as I show you would, I mean, rewire, I mean, would, I mean, rewire, I mean, okay, in this approach. Okay, so now I integrate I mean, of X is, okay, so now I compute my determinants for, okay, for, I mean, for constant lambda, uh, I mean, for constant, I mean, lambda and rho. Okay, so first, I mean, I assume that my lambda, I mean, and rho are constant. It is like, uh, I mean, the variation of Lanzats in the mean field technique. And actually it goes back to, 1920, I mean, I mean, to 1928, uh, I mean, it is related with, I mean, the name of Pyres. And, okay, so I assume first, I mean, that, okay, that my saddle point values of lambda, I mean, and rho and the mean field technique are constant, okay, and finally, I would justify that, I mean, indeed, they're constant, okay, finally, I would consider the fluctuations about this constant value, and I would show you that these fluctuations, I mean, actually increase, I mean, the value of the action. Okay, okay, so I compute this, I mean, simple determinants, I mean, for constant lambda and rho, and this, and this computation actually goes back to, I mean, I mean, to Brink-Nielsen 1973. Okay, this is described in the textbook. And actually, I mean, the result is, I mean, pretty simple. It is an additional, I mean, divergent bulk, I mean, contribution, this one. Okay, so the first line is just my classical part. Okay, so this is, I mean, the additional bulk contribution. Well, sorry. And, okay, this is what's called, I mean, the Casimir, I mean, energy, and it has such a simple form because I can see that the limit I mean, of, I mean, okay, when the length, I mean, of my, I mean, cylinder or torus, I consider uh, the, I mean, geometry of, I mean, a cylinder of, I mean, a torus in order to get rid, I mean, of possible, I mean, I mean, tachyon. So my, uh, okay, so I mean, the length about my compact, I mean, direction beta, it should be larger than, I mean, this minimal tachyonic lens, okay? Yeah, and this is in the ideology uh, of the effective string theory, which I mentioned. Okay, so given this, I mean, effective action, it's quite, I mean, is it, I mean, to find out it's minimal, I mean, because, I mean, it's quadratic in lambda bar and rho bar, I can immediately see from this, I mean, rho, okay, so if I minimize respect to rho, my, I mean, equation, I mean, for lambda bar would be quadratic, and here it is written, I mean, the solution of this quadratic equation, I mean, for lambda bar, okay, and here it is written the, I mean, the minimal value of rho. Okay, so just, I mean, this solution, uh, I mean, of my, this, I mean, mean field values, I mean, of lambda and rho, and what is, I mean, interesting, I mean, in this formula is, I mean, the emergence of this square root, okay? So because, I mean, the square root, I mean, has emerged and my continuum limit and, and okay, when I say continuum limit, I mean the limit when my excitations would be, okay, would be light, I mean, in the, I mean, in the units of lambda, okay? And the units, I mean, of my, I mean, of my, I mean, of my ultraviolet cutoff, Okay, so this limit, it would be when this, I mean, square root, okay, just nearly, I mean, vanishes. And because of the presence of the square root, you can immediately see that I can expect some, uh, well, some critical indices. 
Okay, just coming from here. Okay, this is indeed the case. And actually, I mean, my approach to, I mean, the string, it would be like, I mean, the known approach to the two-dimensional sigma model. And actually, it would look, I mean, pretty much like sigma model. I mean, in three dimensions where it is, well, it's well known, I mean, I mean, non-renormalizable, I mean, perturbatively. Uh, okay, but I mean, in the one over n expansion, in, I mean, it becomes, I mean, okay, I mean, it becomes finite, renormalizable, I mean, the own symmetry resistor. Okay, so this is an example of the theory, which is, okay, which looks some pathologies. I mean, perturbatively, but okay, but I mean, it is fine. Okay, but it's okay, but it is fine. And the one over an expansion. Okay, so as I mentioned, you, I mean, already uh, my, okay, my physical limit, it would be when this, I mean, bare string, I mean, tangent. Okay, so my. Okay, so my k is actually just nothing but I mean inverse, I mean inverse alpha prime in string theory. So the classical limit it would be, it would be alpha prime going, I mean going, I mean I mean to zero. It means, it means, it means k not going to infinity. Okay, so this would be my standard. I mean perturbation theory about the classical vacuum, uh, but. I mean, as I already said you, I would consider yet another limit, okay, when my, okay, when my K naught is approaching, okay, the value where that square root, okay, would vanish. Okay, so this would be some quantum, I mean, ground state of my string and, okay, and classically my lambda bar, it would be near one. Okay, and in the quantum case, it would be approaching some d dependent value. Okay, just shown here. Okay, now just about the scaling regimes. Okay, now how, okay, now how I mean, first of the two problems I mentioned could be resolved. Okay, and from the formula, I mean, I shown you, I mean, I mean, for the ground state energy, it's known, in fact, as I mean, Alvarez, I mean, I mean, formula, it was first obtained uh, at large D by Alvarez, I mean, in, I mean, in very early 1980s. Okay, then it was obtained by, by canonical quantizations in 26 dimension by I Minari, mean, but it, I mean, actually 19 X is, I mean, 19, I mean, 86, I mean, I mean, Paul Olson has shown you that actually this formula, okay, just can be obtained in canonicalization. I mean, in any number of dimensions, just because anomalies, I mean, I mean, would vanish at large beta, okay, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, I mean, perturbatively in one of the beta, it was obtained in any number of dimensions. Okay, so, Okay, now from this formula, it is immediately seen that uh, my ground state energy, I mean, cannot, I mean, scale to finite, I mean, for any beta, just because my, my bare string tension is of the order of lambda squared. Okay, but it's possible to scale just one state, okay, if I would fine tune beta, I mean, to the value where Okay, well, this, I mean, square root, it will vanish. Okay, so for one value, I can still, I mean, have light excitation. Okay, but only for one value, just because for excited values, it would be an additional, I mean, A10 in this formula. Okay, so if I scale, okay, so if I just scale, I mean, one value, then I mean, excitations would not scale. And actually this is, I mean, more or less, I mean, I mean, a heuristic, I mean, proof in the continuum, I mean, all the theorem I mentioned, I mean, the no-go theorem for, I mean, the string existence, 
I mean, in four, three dimensions, okay, just, I mean, proven by these people. But, I mean, actually with my construction, I can, I can proceed, I mean, in a slightly different way. Okay, so I can just rescale my, uh, okay, my units, I mean, of length. Okay, like I can, I mean, rescale this, I mean, unit, okay, this unit, I mean, of meter in Paris in order to have, I mean, finite, okay, finite, I mean, renormalized observable. Okay, so I rescale according to this formula. And making this rescaling, I would obtain some finite, okay, some finite both. Uh, I mean, ground state energy, okay, and it can be shown, I mean, additionally, the finite string tension, okay, which means, I mean, additionally finite, I mean, excited states, okay, so, I mean, such a procedure, I mean, of renormalization of length, it would, it would, I mean, bypass this I mean, no go theorem. Okay, but now the point is what would be actually this length? Okay, so I mean, actually, okay, so actually we call this limit like, I mean, Lily pushing, I mean, string like, I mean, scaling limit. I mean, because I mean, actually, this length would be very, very small. Okay, so I mean, if my, okay, so if my physical length would be the one, then this, okay, then this let let me call it as, I mean, I mean, the bare length, I mean, it would be like, I mean, one over lambda. It means it would be just of the order of the cutoff in the target space. But still, it would be some real, I mean, some real continuum limit because according to this formula for uh, the wall sheet, I mean, the wall sheet, I mean, cutoff, it would be one over lambda multiplied by the fourth root of, okay, of my metric, but my metric, I mean, as was, I mean, shown in those formulas, okay, maybe I will just show you it once again, because it is important. Okay, so this is, I mean, the formula of my metric, and in this, I mean, scaling limit, my metric just, I mean, became infinite. Okay, so because of that, my ball sheet cutoff or my number of modes in the string expansion, it would be, I mean, much larger than my, I mean, my target space cutoff. And, and uh, okay, so I mean, actually, uh, this, I mean, I mean, this scaling limit, it is not like the usual scaling limit in quantum field theory. And suppose we have an Eisen model on the lattice and we have two, okay, just two degrees of freedom at, I mean, at each side of this lattice. And then in order to have the continuum limit, I mean, we have to have an infinite correlation length. Uh, but in my case, I can have infinite correlation length. I mean, even, I mean, at uh, my, I mean, target space cutoff because my, I mean, row bar or my number of modes would be infinite. Okay, so this Lily pushing scaling limit, I mean, it is just approached because of an infinite number, I mean, of modes, not because of, I mean, the infinite correlation length in the target space. Okay, and this is how this, I mean, no go theorem, I mean, is bypassed just because when people proved it, I mean, they assume the usual. I mean, I mean, quantum field theoretical scaling limit with uh, the infinite correlation length. Yeah. Okay. Now, how it looks like? I mean, I mean, artistically, this little push and scaling limit. And now, I mean, why it is? I mean, for the number of Goto string, I mean, this little push and scaling limit, not I mean the usual. I mean, scaling limit like, I mean, for the polyp of string. Okay, so I start once again from this formula by Brink and Nielsen for the, I mean, zero point, I mean, energy. I mean, it's more or less, I mean, the formula which I haven't shown you already, except it is now at one loop. I mean, one loop, I mean, about the classical string vacuum. 
Okay, so we have this, I mean, this difference, I mean, of the best, I mean, of the best ring tension. Okay, and the cutoff. And usually people just say that, well, I mean, let us renormalize, I mean, the best ring tangent, fine tuning this, I mean, K naught near this value in such a way for, I mean, the physical string length to be finite. Okay, so it is what is written, I mean, in the textbooks, but I cannot do that, I mean, non perturbatively just because I, okay, it is just because, I mean, as I have shown you already, I mean, instead of this difference, I have I mean, cannot multiply by some square root. And this, okay, and this term is just, I mean, the first order, I mean, expansion in one of K naught, I mean, I mean, semi classical expansion, I mean, of this square root formula. Okay, so my ideology is as follows that, I mean, we cannot just simply renormalize, I mean, this K naught, I mean, like, I mean, this, but this. Okay, but this minus lambda squared in this formula simply shown a kind of, I mean, an instability, I mean, of classical string vacuum. And actually it's possible to, well, I mean, just to, I mean, investigate this instability in the mean field approximation, just, I mean, adding a cost. Okay, just in the standard way, I mean, like, I mean, people investigate spontaneous breaking of symmetries in quantum field theory. Okay, so we add them in a source. Okay, then we make, I mean, the Legendre transformation. And once again, I mean, this source looks pretty much like, I mean, I mean, the term already I have in my formula. So, I mean, okay, so this computation, I mean, in the field approximation, it can be repeated and just, okay, just, I mean, using, I mean, blah, 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 the standard, I mean, procedure replacing, I mean, the source by, I mean, the classical, I mean, field row bar. Okay, we can compute the, okay, making it's called, I mean, the Legendre transformation. And actually this procedure, I mean, goes back to 1958. I mean, Jonah I mean, it was introduced once again for, I mean, studying a spontaneous breakdown of symmetry. I mean, actually, I mean, the, I mean, for Fermi theory. Okay, so just, I mean, making all these kind of, I mean, I mean, procedure, we can obtain this very simple formula for the effective potential. Okay, just written here. Okay, okay, and graphically, this effective potential looks like, I mean, in my picture. Okay, so indeed, I mean, it goes down near one, near the classical vacuum, and it has some minimal, okay, and this value, which is precisely my mean field vacuum. Okay, so I mean, if you wish, I have shown you that, I mean, I mean, the classical vacuum is globally non-stable, but my mean field vacuum, I mean, I mean, is globally stable. Okay, now I can expand near my mean field vacuum, and I mean, this, I mean, large flux, I mean, these large fluctuations, okay, would just come with positive sign. It means it is global under, I mean, little fluctuations about that. But I mean, in a moment, I mean, I would show you that even, I mean, the wave fluctuations about this, I mean, mean, I mean, field, I mean, I mean, vacuum would be, I mean, okay, would be stable. Uh, but before doing that, okay, let me just mention, I mean, Okay, this observable, it would be my first deviation from the Polyakov stream. Uh, okay, namely, uh, I mean, okay, namely the computation of, I mean, the so, I mean, the so-called, I mean, string susceptibility, I mean, string susceptibility index, or, I mean, the gravity anomaly dimensions, it was called by, uh, by Knizhny Polyakov, I mean, and Zamolochikov. Okay, roughly speaking, it is, I mean, the entropy of surfaces of fixed, I mean, area A. And I mean, it has some exponential, which is, I mean, cutoff dependent. I mean, exponent, I mean, is cutoff dependent, but it has some universal, I mean, pre-exponential, which is called, I mean, gamma string. And 
Okay, one of, I mean, I mean, the goals, you know, this approach of Nizhnik polychromatic was to compute this. It was to compute this pre-exponential and what I was showing you was I mean, precisely this result. Okay, and now I can just, I mean, compute in once again in my mean field approximation and obtain, okay, and compute and obtain, I mean, the value of, I mean, gamma string equals one half. Okay, which is different from the value one for this kinematics of, I mean, Knizhnik polyakov zemologica Okay, and this value of, I mean, one half is roughly speaking because of the square root, which, okay, which was in all of my formulas, okay, and which is missing for the, uh, okay, and which is missing for the, I mean, Polyakov string, because for the Polyakov string, uh, the ground, I mean, the ground state would be just the, it would be just, I mean, the classical, I mean, vacuum. Okay, now just one slide about the stability. I mean, about the stability of this, I mean, mean field, I mean, vacuum under, I mean, wavy fluctuations and the standard way, I mean, once again, to compute the stability, it would be to evaluate this determinant for, I mean, Okay, for some baby field, I mean, expanding about these classical values. And once again, this computation is doable. I, I mean, to quadratic, I mean, order in this, I mean, fluctuations. In fact, it's, I mean, very easily doable. And I mean, this, okay, and this, I mean, quadratic form, which appear is positively definite. Okay, provided, I mean, my lambda is imaginary. Okay, so I mean, just, I mean, by construction, my Lagrange multiplier was, I mean, imaginary, and this quadratic form is precisely, I mean, I mean, positively definite for, I mean, imaginary lambda. Okay, so this is, I mean, the first lesson of my formula. And actually, the second lesson, I mean, is that, I mean, this lambda, I mean, it propagates only. I mean, I mean, to the distances of the order of the cutoff. Okay, so it is localized at the distances of the order of the cutoff. And that was, I mean, this original, I mean, observation, but I mean, by Polyakov, why the number go to string and Polyakov string, I mean, equivalent, but I would, I mean, show you that in fact, this, uh, I mean, I mean, these distances would be observable from larger distances, okay, and would slightly change the, and would slightly change, I mean, the results. Okay, now, okay, now a little bit about, okay, now a little bit technical detail, I mean, about, I mean, expansion about the mean field. Okay, so I will just, I mean, compute uh, this path integral, I mean, over, I mean, rho. So, I mean, first I would path integrate over lambda in a moment I will show you, but say for the Polyakov stream, we have no lambda, we have, I mean, only the path integral over rho. And I can once again represent all my, I mean, I'm, I mean, I mean, all determinants of my Pauli Villar, I mean, regulators, I mean, in such a simple form. Okay, and then I can just, I mean, compute uh, I mean, those diagrams which appear in the column and what, I mean, in that effective potential of, I mean, Coleman Weinberg, I mean, how it's called in quantum field theory. Okay, just because I have this addition of vertex for interaction between, okay, I mean, Rho and my Pauli Villar, I mean, regulators. Okay, so this is, I mean, I mean, I mean, this term in my, I mean, in my action for the Pauli Villar, I mean, regulators, and it would be, it would be cubic, I mean, vertex, it would be, I mean, a cubic, I mean, vertex, I mean, for inter I mean, for interaction, I mean, I mean, between row, I mean, and, okay, and why, but I mean, actually, I mean, I would, Okay, I mean, actually, I would represent in the standard way my rho, I mean, as an exponential of phi. Okay, so I mean, this phi was called historically, I mean, the I mean, Louisville field. 
I mean, just because, I mean, the effective action for the Polakov model was, I mean, the Liu election. So, I mean, actually I would have, uh, well, I mean, okay, I mean, I would have some interaction, um, I mean, of the regulators with two phi, three phi, I mean, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, very good. So what I will be doing, I will be once again, I mean, expand, Okay, just I mean as before for axis, I mean I would expand. Okay, just now I okay, now I can see the fluctuations of the Louisville field. I mean phi, and in order to compute these fluctuations, okay, once again I expand about I mean about some classical field. And actually I would consider this classical field as I mean smooth one and uh, okay so I would just consider this as a kind of background metric oh. Oh. okay for my I mean fluctuating part okay which I call I mean I mean phi quantum okay now just before proceeding Okay, just one slide about how to integrate over, I mean, lambda. Okay, and why one more term would appear? Uh, well, actually I missed apparently one slide, but maybe it would be late. I would just explain you uh, on the example of this, I mean, of the silly expansion, what I'm, okay, what I'm about to do with this, okay, with this, I mean, path integrating over the quantum, I mean, part of phi. Okay, so on this slide, it is written once again, the quadratic part, I mean, of my action, but now taking, I mean, into account fluctuations, it means for, I mean, it means for, I mean, I mean, wavy, I mean, lambda, I mean, I mean, for wavy, I mean, lambda. Okay, and phi. Yeah, and before I was showing you the divergent part of this effective action, and now I'm showing you uh, the, I mean, the finite, I mean, part. Okay, so it is, I mean, about the exact, I mean, result, except I put, I mean, the trace of lambda, I mean, to be zero, just, well, just, I mean, roughly speaking, because, I mean, it would not change, I mean, anything. And, okay. Okay, now integrating over lambda, I mean, this, I mean, path integral would be Gaussian, so I can simply integrate over lambda just, okay, just solving my, I mean, equation, I mean, finding the minimum, okay, then shifting. So, I mean, actually the result would be like that. And this, okay, and this additional term for phi, it would give me, it would give me two terms, I mean, I mean, finally, okay, so it would be this structure written in this formula, but I mean, I mean, to this, I mean, order in derivatives, I mean, actually, I mean, I can integrate by parts and just, I mean, I mean, to get, I mean, each of the two, I mean, high derivative terms, okay, which are available, I mean, in this particular situation. So, I mean, this term, it would be the famous, I mean, curvature squared, term. Okay, just I mean the curvature squared. Okay, in a moment I would show you in great I mean detail. Okay, and this would be some new terms, okay, which appears, I mean, because of this, I mean, path integral over lambda. Okay, and this term once again is not like curvature squared. Okay, so when okay, and then general gauge it would be it would be highly I mean nonlinear term and roughly speaking it appears because my lambda, it has, I mean, a kind of chirality, okay? So because of that, it would appear. Okay, so now my action, okay, now my action, which I consider, as I mentioned you already, it has, I mean, this curvature square term, okay? And it has this, I mean, additional term, which is the conformal gauge. It would be just, I mean, the same term as before. Okay, except I consider now this term with an arbitrary, I mean, coefficient because it might change, okay, when passing from, 
I mean, the number got action. I mean, I mean, to this action. Okay, well, I mean, generically, it would be, it would be, I mean, a conformal field theory. I mean, theory with, okay, with two parameters. One parameter would be my, I mean, B not squared as, okay, as usual. And another parameter would be my G. Yes. Okay, so usually this, I mean, high derivative, of course, term is, I mean, suppressed in the Polyakov, I mean, in the case of the Polyakov string, just because it is proportional to, I mean, the cutoff squared, and for most configurations, uh, it is negligible. But in my case, I mean, as I would show you, I mean, in a moment, the configurations, okay, which are typical in the parse integral over five. I mean, over phi quantum would be not smooth. Okay, so instead I would, I mean, okay, instead I would, I mean, always get a kind of, I mean, an uncertainty, I mean, epsilon, okay, which, okay, which comes, I mean, as I mean, I mean, the vertex for this interaction, you can see it would be some, it would be some interactions. Yeah, okay, sorry, it's a better thing from this term. It would be same I mean, cubic, Okay, quartic and okay, set to interaction just coming from this term. Okay, and this epsilon would be the uh, it would be the coupling, I mean, of my interaction. Okay, so but it would be additionally uh, the it would be additionally the I mean a kind of I mean an ultraviolet I mean a kind of an ultraviolet cutoff, okay, which comes, I mean, because my propagator would change. Okay, now my propagator, like, you know, I mean, like, I mean, always in high derivative, I mean, gravity, it would be k squared, I mean, plus epsilon, I mean, plus epsilon k to four. Okay, so this epsilon, it would be my I mean, ultraviolet cutoff. And, okay, so I would always, I mean, get some, I mean, some divergences like, Okay, like epsilon to minus one multiply, I mean, by epsilon. So, I mean, altogether, it would give me, it would give me some, un, okay, some uncertainty, which I would be doing. And this, okay, and this uncertainties would produce, I mean, some anomalies. Okay, uh, just some Yuri, numbers. Yeah. Yuri, Yuri it's yeah. Arkady. Um, may I uh, ask you, I missed the beginning probably of the, of the talk. So uh, what are the rules yeah. of the game? If you if you if you keep uh, one high derivative term, why are you ignoring some higher or higher order terms? So you have a cutoff and you have these irrelevant interactions. So the, all of them, if you sit on the cutoff scale, all of them are yeah. becoming yeah. important. So how you distinguish yeah. between? Yeah. So you yes. you, you can do. That. Yeah. It's, Yes, actually, I have a paper, I mean, on the subject that, I mean, it really looks like, I mean, an anomaly. Okay, so, I mean, in this formula, I mean, it's only the, I mean, it's only the, yeah. Okay, so let me just return to, uh, okay, yeah. Okay, so here it is written only in mean, the terms of the order of I mean, epsilon, but I mean, I consider the case of I mean, the terms of I mean, epsilon squared, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then of course, I mean, the propagator would be modified, okay? And vertices would be modified, but I managed to show that actually the numbers would be just I mean, the same. Okay, so it looks really like an anomaly, okay? so. It it looks, I mean, unbelievable, but it works. Okay, so it's my paper published recently in Nuclear Physics B. Okay, so let me continue. And actually, the reason why, okay, why, I mean, why I concentrate, I mean, only on this, I mean, I mean, term of the order of I mean epsilon, it would be because, well, in a couple of next slides. Yeah, I would apply this, I mean, Knizhnik polyakov zamolochik of conformal field theory technique in order to compute uh, the conformal weight and, I mean, I mean, the central charge for this model. Okay, and indeed, I mean, I would, okay, and indeed, I mean, I would show you that, 
I mean, this, I mean, additional, I mean, term would, I mean, revive and would give you some result, but I managed to do this only for this, I mean, simplest, I mean, addition, like, I mean, R squared or, okay, my additional term. Yes, but I mean, just before that, let me just, I mean, okay, let me just continue that. Okay, so actually what I will be doing in my, okay, my couple of next slides, it, okay, it could be understood from this, I mean, silly expansion formula. Okay, so this is, I mean, the standard, I mean, silly expansion, I mean, formula. Okay, but now written for the case of, I mean, the heat kernel. Okay, just for the case of, I mean, the Laplace operator. And I can see the little bit more complicated operator. So I, Okay, so I mean, I showed you in my, I mean, first slide, a little bit more complicated expression, but just, uh, uh, yes, just for, I mean, Arcadi, I mean, this, I mean, simplest and well-known, I mean, case of, I mean, the silly expansion for heat kernel. Okay, so, I mean, David computed, in fact, I mean, this was even before silly, I mean, some years ago, and I mean, before silly, he computed this additional terms of this expansion. Okay, and we can see that, I mean, naturally, I mean, when I average over my quantum, I mean, I mean, over my quantum part of phi, I mean, this additional terms would, I mean, revive because, I mean, say the, I mean, the correlator of, I mean, R squared, okay, when I expand in phi and average according to this formula, okay, it would give me some, I mean, some contribution of the root of one over A squared, Okay, multiply by this, I mean, a squared, it would give me some number, okay, which would, okay, change my, I mean, anomaly, okay. So more or less it is, I mean, it was my original motivation when I was, I mean, I mean, okay, why I was, I mean, computing, I mean, all this kind, I mean, of, I mean, anomalies. Okay, now I proceed with, Okay, some very brief, I mean, remind you, okay, about this Knizhnik polyak of the logic of conformal field theory technique. And I mean, as was, yeah, well, I mean, as it was, I mean, formulated by, I mean, David Disler, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Kawai, it's, I mean, it's possible, I mean, to describe uh, the polyak of string by the following Okay, but the following quadratic effective action and with this quadratic effective action, I mean, everything could be computed. Okay, so, I mean, we can compute, say, the, I mean, the conformal weight. Okay, it's simply given by this formula and we can compute, I mean, I mean, the central charge, it is given by this formula. Okay, then it's quadratic equation, which we can solve. Okay, and from the solution, we see immediately this, I mean, this, I mean, I mean, I mean, this problem, what I called, okay, what, I mean, what I call the non perturbative uh, okay, what I call, I mean, the no-go theorem for, uh, I mean, non perturbative I mean, existence, I mean, of, I mean, the bosonic string, because once again, I mean, this number is, okay, is real only for the, I mean, less, I mean, than one. Okay, now, okay, now what I'm doing now, I include uh, my, I mean, additional terms. Okay, so now, okay, so now I compute my, I mean, additional contribution to the energy momentum tensor. Okay, just for historical reasons, I have split this in two parts. Okay, first, I mean, in this, I mean, okay, and this, I mean, what I call the, I mean, I mean, the minimal energy momentum tensor, I mean, associated with minimal, I mean, coupling to gravity. Okay, and in fact, forming G equals zero, just forming R squared to dimensional gravity, it, I mean, it was known. I mean, it was computed, I mean, by some people. Okay, but I mean, because I have the interaction, okay, because I have, I mean, a different Murphy's environment, I mean, I mean, interaction, Okay, I mean a different, I mean a different morphism invariant, I mean self interaction. Okay, then as usual, I have this additional, I mean, terms. Yeah, and quite, I mean, surprisingly, I mean, this, I mean, holds the risk, I mean, okay, with this addition, it would be, I mean, both, I mean, conserved, 
okay, and I mean traceless. And actually the fact that it is traceless, it be just, I mean, remarkable because I have, I mean, a dimensional, I mean, parameter epsilon. Okay, but still my, I mean, energy momentum tensor, I mean, is traceless. So because of, okay, so because of that, I would expect conformal invariance at all distances. Okay, not only at the distances much larger than, I mean, this, Okay, then I mean this cutoff. Okay, now similar, I mean, I mean consideration about the, I mean the Pauli Villar, I mean regulators. Okay, so when I have several Pauli Villar, I mean regulators, I mean as I, I mean said you, I mean a couple of Grassmann variables of, I mean mass squared, m squared, and one. Okay, and one with normal statistic, I mean with mass. I mean, with mass squared, I mean, 2m squared. Well, maybe I should not, okay, maybe I should no longer call it as a mean z. I mean, introducing some other letter, okay, but just historically. And, okay, so this is my action, I mean, for Pauli Villar, I mean, regulators. And actually, the question it could be why Pauli Villar, I mean, regulators, because I have already some regulation with high derivatives, but this is not, I mean, like, it is not like I mean regulating I mean whole I mean all uh, uh, yeah I mean all the divergences okay step poles would still remain okay would still remain I mean non regulars well in a moment I can show you immediately maybe I will I will take like five more minutes to briefly sketch yeah I mean I mean few more I mean slides. Okay, so an analogous energy momentum tensor can be constructed. Oh yeah, for this, I mean, Pauli Villar, I mean, I mean, regulators, I mean, once again. Okay, and once again, quite, I mean, remarkably, I mean, this energy momentum tensor would be conserved. Okay, I mean, then traceless. It means, it means, I mean, that actually my regulators would not spoil I mean, conformal symmetry. It's not like in quantum field theory. So, I mean, in, I mean, in theory with different morphism, it looks like, I mean, everything, I mean, everything is completely different. Yes, yeah, so now, okay, so now how the DK is modified, I mean, in the presence of my, I mean, of my high derivative, I mean, interactions. Okay, let me consider this just a one loop computing this uh, one loop anomalous dimension from this uh, okay from this operate I mean operator product just in the standard way uh, well it would be a bunch of diagrams okay so here on the left it is me it would be my I mean I mean it would be I mean it would be I mean ZZ component of my energy momentum tensor. Okay, now because of interaction, I would have a bunch of one loop diagrams. So I'm just, I mean, checking this at one loop. Okay, what, okay, one loop means, I mean, B not squared correction to, I mean, classical, I mean, results. Okay, so, okay, so because I would see the difference between Polyakov and Nambogoto, uh, well, okay, one loop, Okay, one loop in a sense would be enough, I mean, for me. Okay, so I mean, okay, so it would be, I mean, it would be a bunch of diagrams. Okay, and this first, I mean, three diagrams would be just a correction to the propagator. Okay, next, I mean, three diagrams, it would be, okay, sorry, I mean, next, I mean, three diagrams, it would be just, I mean, the correction to the, I mean, energy, I mean, momentum tensor. Okay, next, I mean, three diagrams would be the correction to the, I mean, renormalization. Uh, okay, to, I mean, I mean, to the, I mean, renormalization of my exponential. And actually it would be only one diagram. It would be only one diagram, okay, which would give me non-trivial contribution to be computed. Okay, and first of all, I mean, it would, okay, and I'm, 
Okay, and I mean, first of all, I mean, the usual term, I mean, I mean, the usual quadratic term in the energy momentum tensor would give me the standard, I mean, result. Okay, this one for, oh, okay, I mean, I mean, standard, I mean, result for, I mean, the, I mean, conformal weight. Okay, now we repeat this computation for, I mean, the central charge. Okay, uh, sorry, now I, I begin want to just... this. Sorry, I just wanted to warn you that we are running out of time. And we still yes, have exactly. Parts. I'm just finishing. Yeah. yeah, okay. I'm just finishing maybe. Okay, just maybe a minute, three minutes. Okay, so I'm just computing this analogously for this product. I mean, of two energy moment tensors. Okay, it would be the same bunch of diagram. And actually what I would have to, I mean, relate, it would be only, I mean, this diagram. Okay, so I have, I mean, evaluated it. Well, it's not a big deal. I mean, because it's rather simple diagram. Okay, and the contribution would be non-vanishing. And actually this diagram, it comes from the, uh, okay, it comes from the non-local term, which I got in my energy moment tensor because of non-locality. Uh, Okay, because of non-locality action. Okay, so I would have only one. Okay, I would have only. Okay, I would have only one change in my, I mean, equation. I mean, for the central charge, namely, I would have this additional contribution. I mean, I mean, I mean, to the central charge. Okay, and because of that, well, if I assume that this equation, I mean, is exact, and there are some reasons to expect that, but at least, I mean, it. I mean, it works, I mean, at one loop, I mean, I would have the discrepancy between the Polyakov string, I mean, I mean, associated with, I mean, G equals zero and the number got a string, I mean, associated with a non-vanishing value of G. And by the way, for just pure, I mean, a squared, I mean, just for, I mean, pure, I mean, a squared Louisville theory, okay, where I mean, G is zero, I would just reproduce them I mean, in the same, Okay, just I mean, I mean the same, I mean results, I mean as for the I mean usual, I mean Polyakov string, okay, which just I mean shows I mean that I mean this discrepancy appears, I mean only for okay now, okay, now let me just mention what I have done. I mean, yet I have done some check, I mean, of my results. I have done some explicit computation of propagator. I mean, the renormalization of, I mean, this exponential associated with, I mean, okay, associated with, I mean, the metric tensor. Okay, okay, and just explicit renormalization of the energy moment tensor, and I obtained some numbers, okay, which I mean, precisely, I mean, fits, I mean, the, okay, that intelligent, I mean, I mean, computation of DDK. Okay, so additionally, okay, so additionally, what check I have done, I have done the, I mean, computation of logs. I mean, in the case of my, I mean, um, I mean, in the case of my high derivative Liouville theory, okay, and I have explicitly shown that logs indeed, I mean, I mean, cancel, which means that, I mean, indeed, uh, the conformal invariance, I mean, is maintained at least in one loop. Okay, and moreover, I have done this, well, for some reasons I have done, I mean, this computation at two loops. Okay, so I have computed, I mean, the quadratic contribution, I mean, I mean, I mean, to the effective action and cubic contribution to the effective action. Okay, and I found, okay, and I found this, I mean, consolation of logs. And actually this logs cancel because of some theorem that uh, the infrared, I mean, effective action, I mean, it's just quadratic, like, I mean, what I show you. And I mean, because of that, it must be, I mean, um, it must be the, um, it must be the, it must be the constellation of infrared logs, which, I mean, inevitably leads to the constellation of, I mean, the infrared logs. Okay. So, okay. So now just a few. 
Okay, now just a few, I mean, I mean, conclusions. Okay, so I believe I managed to probably completely, I mean, resolve the, I mean, the first no-go theorem I mentioned. Okay, by introducing the Lilliputian scaling limit. Okay, and, and partially, okay, and partially, I mean, find, I mean, a way out for resolving the second, I mean, no-go theorem, okay, coming from conformal field theory and, Okay, what, okay, so what was most important for the first was just, I mean, that, I mean, the vacuum is not classical, but rather mean field vacuum. Okay, and I mean, the continuum limit is not like just, I mean, replacing, I mean, K naught, I mean, the difference between the best ring tangent and lambda squared by the, I mean, renormalized string tangent, but a little bit more sophisticated. I mean, this Lily pushing, I mean, scaling. And okay, so that was, I mean, the difference, I mean, between Polyakov and Nambugoto. And uh, okay, so one more, I mean, observed difference, it was, I mean, in computing of this, I mean, string susceptibility index, which was. Okay, which was one half, I mean, for number got and one for the Polyakov, just because, I mean, of the emergence, I mean, of the square root. And I mean, I, okay, in my last comment is that most probably, I mean, this model, which, okay, what I call, I mean, I mean, the beyond Louisville action, uh, it could be, I mean, very interesting model because it has two parameters, okay, still preserving okay, still preserving, as I believe, conformal invariance. Okay, so usually it is only one parameter like B not squared or, I mean, the number of fields or, okay, but I managed to introduce one more, okay, one more, I mean, one more parameter, okay, which I call as G, okay, which, Okay, in such a way that, I mean, the model apparently still preserves, I mean, the conformal environments. And actually this last, I mean, statement, it was extremely interesting for me because in the original work, I mean, of Belavin, Polyakov and Zamolochik on conformal, I mean, field theories, it was some extremely important, I mean, footnote that, I mean, all, I mean, all conformal field theories I mean, equivalent to, I mean, the ones given by quadratic, I mean, by quadratic, uh, I mean, by quadratic, I mean, energy momentum, I mean, tensor, but, uh, well, but, well, but most probably I managed, I mean, to construct, I mean, something else. Yeah, okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Um, is there any difference uh, in what you expect if you have a world sheet supersymmetry? Uh, presumably the same hydrogen will appear. Right? Excuse me, so, is I, I mean, if you can see. What I mean, supersymmetry? Yes, two dimensional, in two dimensions. Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, in case of supersymmetry, it would be just no. Uh, I mean, it would be no square root in my formulas. Okay, so it was some formula with, I mean, the square root on which, I mean, everything was based, like, I mean, it was, I mean, then, I mean, translated into this famous, uh, I mean, Elbaras, I mean, RV spectrum. Okay, but this, I mean, I mean, the square root would be missing, I mean, for, I mean, it would be, it would be missing for, I mean, for, I mean, the green, I mean, green Schwartz superstream because I mean, there is no Lusher term, I mean, for the green, I mean, green Schwartz, I mean, superstream, but it would be still there for, I mean, I mean, for I mean, RNS, I mean, for I mean, RNS superstream. And actually, this computation once again goes back to, I mean, to Paul Olson, I mean, 18, I mean, 1986, he computed. I mean, an extension of this, I mean, of this, I mean, Alvarez, I mean, Arby, I mean, spectrum, I mean, for the case of, 
I mean, I mean, I mean, for the case of I mean narrowness and I mean just I mean super string and okay, so I mean the result was like I mean what I said to you. Okay, so to me it looks like simply a specific I mean of boson string. Okay, thank you. And actually, I can't do remember like some 15 years ago we were receiving correspondence about, I mean, about this, I mean, equivalence of Polyakov and uh, Nambu Gotostrin. Okay, and I was just asking you about, I mean, what is written in the Polyakov book, I mean, his proof. Okay, and I remember you said, well, it is a kind of, I mean, I mean, heuristic proof. Yeah. Well. And actually in my paper, I mean, I, okay, in my paper, I mean, I did refer to your work with Fratkin and Zetlin, okay, where you indeed, I mean, I mean, have shown that, uh, okay, that both, I mean, theories, okay, I mean, equivalent, but I mean, you have shown this, I mean, at one loop about classical vacuum. Okay, yeah. so I have, I mean, I mean, just no doubt that it is, I mean, the same, I mean, it would be, I mean, the same, I mean, up to any loop, I mean, order about the classical vacuum. Okay, but the problem is that, I mean, classical vacuum, I mean, it is, I mean, I mean, it is non-stable, I mean, I mean, I mean, for the number got to string. Okay, so it is, I mean, actually the reason why, I mean, the difference appear. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other questions? So, uh, so, so, which part of your talk was mostly more recent work? Because I was <clears throat> I haven't yet looked at your latest paper. So you mostly were discussing oh. your latest paper. You mean about what? About this? I mean about this? I mean higher order terms? Yes. Or that that. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, just one second. Okay, let me just show you. I mean the reference. It's it's doable with modern, I mean with modern technique. Uh, except except for now I cannot go back to the full screen mode. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I mean this was something I shown, I mean, in this paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. And actually what was, I mean, shown, I mean, in this most recent preprint, I mean, it was only this computation of, I mean, the central, I mean, charge, I mean, for this, what I call, I mean, I mean, beyond, I mean, beyond Louisville, I mean, action model. Okay, with this, I mean, additional term. Okay, so without this additional term, uh, it would be just equivalent to, I mean, equivalent, I mean, to the usual Polyakov string, which I call as minimal Polyakov string. Okay, so it would be just complete equivalence. Okay. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I mean, Arkady, I, I mean, I very vaguely remember that, I mean, in the very early days of your research work, I mean, you worked on high derivative, I mean, gravity in four dimensions, like, I mean, okay, with locks, I, Okay, with a bunch of locks and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, then to my mind, when I introduced this, I mean, R squared, I mean, I mean, terms, okay, then I get again a bunch of locks, okay, okay, pretty much similar, I mean, I mean, to the locks, I mean, in four dimensional, I mean, case, except it's two dimensions, okay, but still, I mean, locks for, I mean, for some reasons. Okay, and actually, I mean, the reason is just because, I mean, the interaction is proportional, okay, actually, I mean, to momentum fourth. Okay, so we introduce, I mean, this, I mean, R squared term, and this R squared term would, okay, would provide us, I mean, I mean, I mean, with a kind of, I mean, there would be cut off, but, okay, but our, I mean, interaction would be proportional, I mean, to momentum fourth, okay, so, I mean, altogether, it would be like non-renormalizable theory with quadratic divergences and log divergences, okay, and blah, 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 but this log divergences to me looks pretty much like, I mean, these divergences in, I mean, this, I mean, R squared, 
I mean, no, this is quite for dimension of gravity. Okay, but then I see complete, I mean, I mean, complete cancellation of these logs because, okay, roughly speaking, because of my conformal invariance, I mean, of my theory. Okay, so most probably it is I mean, the difference between four dimensions and two dimensions because yes, I mean yes. I mean because in four dimensions, I mean I mean the conformal I mean invariance I mean is not I mean a strict to provide them I mean, in all these constellations. Yeah, I, I think two and four the dimensions are different here because in um, in uh, in four dimensions this is kind of a marginal problem R squared, but here it's it's sort of formally irrelevant, but you want to keep it and it sits on the cut of, uh, yeah, I guess it's, I don't see quite precisely the analogy. Yeah, so formally, uh, uh, you would expect uh, uh, higher and higher, yeah, as you said, it's R squared is non minimalizable in, in uh, in two dimensions, but because it sits on the cutoff, so it's suppressed by one of the lambda squared, it still contributes. So you can have logs as well. But why they cancel, you maybe indeed it's because of, yeah, it's like, I don't quite immediately see why they should cancel. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's a kind of, I mean, an anomaly. Uh, yeah, and even a uh, yeah. I mean, and once Alyosha Morozov, I mean, even said me how, I mean, this kind of anomalies, I mean, it's called in string theory, but I, okay, but I'm sorry, I've just forgotten. Okay, so it's probably, I mean, the kind of, I mean, anomalies, uh, yeah, well, I mean, specific to string theory because of diffeomorphism, I mean, invariance, because, I mean, actually all these huge constellations, I mean, are because of different morphism, I mean, invariance of my, I mean, introduced interaction. Okay, it seems that we don't have any further questions. So thank you for the talk. Okay, thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you everyone for coming and see you next time.